The biggest wealth transfer in history is happening right now. People are waking up and they know this financial system is rigged for the rich and the poor are getting poorer while the rich make billions. In this video, I'm gonna break down the truth about how to build wealth, invest when there's times of high uncertainty and economic crisis, and how we can take advantage of the situation to build wealth to protect ourselves for us and our families. The more and more I learn about this economic and financial system, the more I see how it is so manipulated. We do not have a free market anymore. It's 100% manipulated to benefit those that have assets and it punishes those that have saves and it rewards those that take risk and take on debt. I've been getting a huge amount of questions about where do I put money, where do I invest, What's a good investment right now? And obviously, you know, my channel is called Michael Invest and tries to make money. I love talking investing, wealth creation, because I'm someone that's come from a poor background and I'm just an everyday Australian trying to figure out, okay, this is a system, this is the game. How do I play the game? Who are the players and how do I get ahead? So I'm gonna break down how to invest, how to build wealth over long term. This isn't gonna be any get rich quick schemes. This isn't gonna be the latest crazy stock like Tesla that's gonna go up you know, 2,000% in a year. This is just gonna be based off evidence and facts on how really people get ahead, how to build wealth over the long term, and how it's really done. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, Michael, how can we invest right now when the country is on verge of economic collapse? I do agree, things definitely aren't looking good right now, but there have been much worse events have happened over the past 100 years, and we do always find a way to adapt and overcome. Now, just a disclaimer, this is not financial advice. This is just what I'm doing and what I've learned over the years on how to build wealth and invest. I'm gonna be going over stocks, gold, silver, crypto, so everyone can take something away from this, whether if you like investing in stocks, crypto, or precious metals. Okay, so firstly, the share market. Now, the share market is very risky in the long term, but guess what? Over the long term, the ASX awards over the past 118 years has returned on average 13% with dividends reinvested. So yes, over the short term, it could be bad, but guess what? You want to be investing in times of uncertainty like what's happening right now because there's gonna be opportunities that are coming. You know, the ASX 200 is about uh, 15 to 17% off its all-time highs. You don't wanna be doing what everyone does when the stock market's at an all-time high and invest, and then when you know it drops and everyone sells. That is the worst thing to do, but you know people never learn. People get emotional with investing, but you just gotta to stick to the facts. So my investing strategy for the share market is dollar cost averaging into index funds. And index funds is pretty much a fund where instead of putting all your money in one stock and you know that company collapsing, you have your money across 200, 500, even there's index funds which spread your money across thousands of companies, so it really reduces your risk. And the best thing about this is it's very passive. You just put your money in, you know, whatever your strategy is every month, three months, six months, and because nobody can predict the market. There's even done studies where 95 to 99% of hedge fund managers over a 30 year time frame can't beat the market. And you know, I'm sure there's a lot of kids that come on YouTube and like, Warren who? Who's Warren? I'm the next Warren Buffett. I've watched two YouTube videos and read a couple of articles on Google. You know, I know how to predict the market and trade stocks. Well, guess what? You're gonna have a lesson from the school of hard knocks. Nobody, and I mean nobody, can predict the market you know, over the 20 to 30 year time frame. You know, there will be, you know, the odd one person, you know, out of 100 million that may get it right most of the time. But you know what, that's not part of my strategy. And, you know, you don't need to try and beat the market. Just dollar cost averaging into index funds, like I said, even being conservative, you can get an 8% return on average over, you know, a 10, 20 year, 30 year time frame. Now, let me show you how time in the market, not trying to beat the market is the most powerful tool. You know, we all try to get caught up in the get rich quick schemes. We wanna get into the market the perfect time, but that really hurts you and I'll show you how. This is what you need to know. Look at this chart. As it says here, if we invested $10,000 in 2004, um, and you tried to predict the market and you missed just the top 10 days. That's right, you just missed out of the 10 best trading days. Instead of your investment going up to $37,000, your investment would only be $22,000. That's a huge, um, you know, 150% of returns you've missed by trying to, you know, buy, sell, predict the market. Now, where this gets really powerful, let's look at if you missed 
the 40 best trading days over a 10 year time frame. Okay, so you've invested $10,000. Now this is what happens when you miss the top 40 best trading days because you try to time the market. Instead of actually making your money and you know making a 370% uh, percent return um, and getting your investment of 10,000 to 37,000, you've actually lost money and your investment now is only worth $7,468. So that shows you cannot predict the market. Trying to be the next Warren Buffett is really gonna hurt you. Look at this, you've got 370% returns just by dollar cost averaging into index funds, and that is the most powerful tool. Okay, so you now realize that if you try and time the market, you're an idiot. And we're gonna now look at what happens with compound interest because Albert Einstein said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, and I'm gonna to prove to you how powerful it is. Okay, so in this scenario, I'm gonna say for example, you invest $1,000 a month, you just dollar cost average, you don't try to predict or beat the market um, into the ASX 200, that's the top 200 companies in Australia um, with dividends reinvested, and we're gonna be conservative and just say you get an 8% return on average uh, per annum, but you know, like I said, the ASX awards over the past 118 years has averaged 13%. Um, we have seen some big gains over the past three months, but we'll just be conservative and say 8%. Now you may be thinking, I don't have $1,000 a month to invest. And uh, you know, that's fine, but there are ways you can greatly reduce your expenses, like your housing. You can house hack by house sharing with mates. You can rent out other rooms if you've got a mortgage, um, or you can just downsize. You gotta think, do I really need this big house? Is it worth my future? You can also greatly reduce your transport costs by selling your car if you don't need it, or just renting a car on the days you need, or getting a more fuel efficient car and a second hand car instead of buying you know, the next you know, Range Rover or BMW. And I'm sure you've probably saved money during this lockdown by not wasting money on materialistic things that don't bring you value because you know the world is all about getting you to spend every dollar you have and putting the rest on credit cards. And hey, if your credit card's macked out, then Afterpay and ZipBay comes in. So those are just some quick tips on how you can reduce your expenses so you can start your journey to wealth and invest. So let's look at this, what happens to our investment of $1,000 per month over 10 years, and then let's look at how powerful compound interest is. So after 10 years of investing, your portfolio is now worth $175,000. That's right, you've built a portfolio worth $175,000, not by trying to beat the market or be the next Warren Buffett, just by dollar cost averaging into index funds. Now let's look at what happens if we drag this out to 20 years, because this is where the real power comes in. Guess what, how much your portfolio is now worth worth over 20 years. That's right, $553,000. This is surely showing you how powerful compound interest is, but it's not over yet. Now let's look at 30 years. And according to my analytics, most of you watching this are between you know, 30, uh, 35 and 45. So I'm sure this will bring you to around retirement age. Your portfolio is now worth one 0.369 million, that's right, $1,369,000. That's how powerful compound interest is. But this is why all the people that are wealthy get wealthy in their last 10 to 20 years of their life because things get even crazier. Let's just say one more example, after 40 years, you just left it in, you know, you don't try to do any more. Um, let's see how much our portfolio is after 40 years. So after 40 years, your portfolio is worth 3,137,000. You've retired a multimillionaire, you know, if you started this at 25, or even if you're 30 and you retire at 70, because a lot of people, you know, are gonna have to be working until they're 70 now, which is so unfortunate. But this just shows you, you know, don't try to beat the market, don't try to predict the market, just get started on your wealth journey right now. Even though there's uncertain times, this is a good opportunity to invest when the stock market is at a discount. Um, it still may be overvalued, I'm not gonna get into the valuations, but all I'd try to do is dollar cost average. But if you don't believe in the stock market, you're a precious metals bulls, you can still build wealth by investing in precious metals and I'll go over how much you can build wealth by investing in gold and silver. So for all my precious metal bulls out there, don't worry, you can still build wealth by investing in gold too. Now there's multiple ways to invest in gold. You can invest in paper gold, but some people want the physical gold, but you're gonna be charged a lot more premiums. You may have to pay uh, charged insurance you know, for holding them at the bullion dealer or at home. 
um, but you still can build wealth by investing in gold. Some people, you know, think gold doesn't do anything, but it is a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against, you know, the currency going down because the Aussie dollar has dropped a lot. Gold has, you know, been in a bull market since this uh, pandemic began. And so you can still build wealth by investing in precious metals. So look at this chart. Gold has gone from around $450 to $500 in 2001, all the way to, you know, approximately 2,800 at its all time highest. Now it's around 2,600. So it has gone up a lot and it shows that, you know, you don't just have to be invested in stocks. You can invest and build wealth through investing in gold, but there are a lot more fees. The returns aren't quite as good, but if you don't believe in the stock market, you can still make, you know, big gains in gold. And let's just say, for example, you invest in gold and after all the fees, after all the premiums, you know, you pay for buying the physical, or you could just invest in the paper one and not pay all those fees. Let's just be a bit more conservative and say the return is on average 7%. Okay, so invest in precious metals like gold or silver. Um, for 10 years, your portfolio would be $167,000 with a 7% return. After 20 years, your portfolio would be 495,000. And after 30 years of investing $1,000 a month, your portfolio would be $1,141,000. So that just goes to show, you know, if you don't believe in the stock market, because I know there are a lot of people that are very pessimistic, don't believe in the stock market, you can still build huge amounts of wealth by investing in gold as well. And for all my crypto fans out there, yes, Bitcoin has been the best performing asset over the past 10 years. Now, I'm not gonna say that's gonna happen over the next 10 years, I highly doubt it. But I do you know, speculate a little bit in Bitcoin. I believe in the idea of it. I'm not gonna pretend I know about all the tech and all the blockchain technology and all that. But I do like that it's decentralized, that it has a fixed supply, they can't manipulate it. Um, I know the government and the central banks don't like it, so that means I like it. But it is a whole highly volatile asset. It's still a new asset class, so we don't really know how to value it. So I only probably gonna put a maximum of my portfolio of 5% in Bitcoin and Ethereum because a lot of other cryptocurrencies are built on Ethereum, so it does have a utility. I hope this opened to your eyes that just investing for the long term, not trying to beat the market, not trying to get the latest stock, not trying to you know be like, oh, a crash is coming, a crash is coming, and trying to get in at the perfect time is how you build wealth. And guess what? That's highly stressful by trying to you know predict the market. Um, you know, you may make the wrong decision, and you're gonna get emotional. The best thing to do, and what's made me have so much more peace of mind going, I believe in the long term, asset prices will go up because the central banks are devaluing currency, they're dropping interest rates, which means asset prices are going to rise. And guess what? It's all rigged to build wealth for the rich. The rich know how to play the game. You need to learn how to play the game too by reducing your expenses. That's what the rich do in times like this but the poor and the middle class keep on spending. It's not their fault, it's because how the media programs you. They say, buy it now, pay later, you deserve it. As you get successful, you need to spend everything you have because this economy relies on people spending every penny they have and debt. So I hope this wakes you up and really inspires you to get on your wealth building journey right now. We're in such uncertain times. You know, people have seen, you know, they've been struggling. Uh, you don't want to be relying on the government because you've seen the government is now reducing JobKeeper, JobSeeker. You want to be able to have financial freedom and you want to be able to look after yourself when times get tough and not have to rely on anyone. And it's not people's fault that they don't know this. They don't teach this in school. Um, the government doesn't teach this because like I keep saying, they need people to spend every penny they have, put the rest on credit cards to keep this economy going. The economy relies on people, you know, being slaves to their employees paying tax and being slaves to the corporations keeping the rich richer by them spending their hard-earned money while the rich save and invest i hope you guys really enjoyed this i know the investing videos don't do as well as the property videos but they are very important it is something i'm extremely passionate about because i haven't come from a rich background i grew up in the western suburbs here in melbourne the poorest town in melbourne melton um, you know i've felt poverty I was poor growing up. I'm still, you know, not a rich guy. I'm just starting my journey, but I'm documenting it. I'm sharing it with all of you, and I hope I can bring people along with me, teach them what I've learned, and I'm gonna share the mistakes. I'm not gonna just pretend I'm some guru that knows everything. I'll make mistakes, I'll share them with you, and hopefully you can learn from my mistakes.
If this video brought you value, please like for the holy YouTube algorithm and comment your thoughts below. What are you doing to build wealth in these hard times and what are you doing to protect your wealth for your family and for your financial future? And subscribe for more awesome content on personal finance, investing, property news, economic news. I'll keep you all up, in date, up to date and informed on the latest. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.